So welcome to Programming Techniques Workshop. Uh, we call it Scratch, even though Lego doesn't. Uh, in Spike Prime, they call it Word Blocks. And for the EV3, they call it EV3 Classroom. The reason we, why we call it Scratch is it's based on uh, Scratch. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, these materials were created by four people. Uh, the initial slides were created by Don Nelson. Um, Terry Alexander has been involved with a variety of training uh, this season. And Luis Cervantes and I uh, refined the slides over the last week. And uh, Luis hopes to join us later in the week. Our program director is Debbie Kerr, and you'll see her email address here. Uh, she's always happy to answer questions or address issues, so feel free to be in touch with Debbie. And certainly feel free to be in touch with me as you have questions or concerns. So we're going to explore Scratch uh, in one hour modules. Today we'll be focusing on robot movement and motors after some introductory discussion. And the slide set does have homework, uh, partly designed by Don Nelson. Uh, you can literally use that homework between sessions and try to complete the assignment. Uh, if you're short on time, you can maybe read through the homework and kind of do it as a mental exercise. You may also find it useful uh, for your team members uh, as a possible starting place for a learning exercise for them. So uh, over the four sessions, we're going to cover, what's this, uh, eight topics, and we'll cover the first two today. So the idea is to prepare you for coaching and teaching opportunities that arise. We don't intend this material to be something you would go from slide by slide with your team members, but be more opportunistic. Uh, if this was early in the season, you might want to take them through some of the material before the challenge is announced, uh, given that the season has started, uh, although you still have plenty of time because the tournaments will be delayed. Uh, you can take your choice as to how you introduce this material Make sure that uh, you introduce it uh, as background and resources, what I've referred to as adding uh, tricks to their bag of tricks. Uh, don't introduce it as in, here's how to solve this problem. Uh, the kids should be doing the work because they'll learn a lot more that way and uh, that makes it more fair for everybody. So scratches, Background is a collaboration between Google and uh, MIT. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm probably thinking of App Inventor, which is a relative of Scratch. Scratch is mostly uh, from MIT. And it's designed from the ground up to be an educational language uh, accessible to children and adults. And most people use it in the cloud. Uh, you develop your applications. Uh, by accessing the Scratch server, and you do traditional programming. Uh, to make it accessible for programming robots, um, it's been adapted so that you actually install it on a PC, uh, or as in Windows 10, or on a uh, Mac, or uh, you can also install it on pads, et cetera, so, uh, and Chromebooks. So a variety of platforms, in each case, the software actually runs on that computer rather than in the cloud. Um, one benefit of that is if uh, the team members need to make a change to their program at an event venue, they don't have to have internet access. All they have to have is the computer they used in the first place, uh, which in many cases would be uh, a laptop or perhaps a Chromebook or pad. So I covered part of this uh, earlier, including the last slide. Uh, the version of Scratch for Spike Prime uh, is built into the Spike Prime app. 
And whenever you want to create a new uh, Scratch program, you select what they call word blocks because that same app gives uh, the kids the option of using Python, which is interesting in and of itself, but not today's subject. Uh, with Mindstorms, uh, it used to be that uh, the language, uh, standard language was EV3 Lab or EV3G, which are two names for the same thing, but uh, Lego is now gravitating towards making the main language uh, for the EV3, EV3 Classroom, although for Windows, you can still get the uh, uh, EV3G or EV3 Lab. Uh, it's a little harder to find, but it's still out there. It's also available for all older Macs, but uh, is not compatible with uh, the Mac Catalina operating system or the Catalina operating system we use EV3 Classroom. Um, the main benefit, though, is not uh, whether or not uh, LEGO recommends something because uh, First LEGO League allows the team to choose any language that runs uh, with the uh, kits they're using. Uh, the benefit of using a scratch-based language is it tends to be very accessible, doesn't require the coaches to be experts in professional programming languages. Uh, uh, the learning curve is fairly short. Um, but there's still some challenges, and that's why we have this workshop. Programming concepts, before we launch into the details, uh, programming is the ultimate and literal uh, interpretation. Um, if you say something that's the least bit ambiguous, the computer will do exactly what you told it to do, not what you meant it to do. Um, the least uh, uh, variation on what you should have said um, in traditional languages, a misplaced comma in um, the this language, uh, selecting the wrong option or the wrong port uh, will uh, cause the program to do what you told it to do, not what you meant it to do. Uh, it doesn't tend to second guess you very well. And uh, the most common thing I've seen is uh, the program seems to be telling the motors the right things, but uh, the cables have plugged into a different place than what the program thinks they're plugged into. And so you either need to move a cable to match the program or change the program to match the cables uh, because it uh, won't figure it out on its own unless you get awfully lucky. Let's see. Looks like there might be a comment here. Uh, no. Okay. Um, and in this particular language, uh, you program from top to bottom. They're uh, referred to as stacks of blocks because there's kind of an analogy to stacking up uh, Lego bricks. And uh, but the overall flow of Scratch programming language matches most uh, modern programming languages like uh, Python and. Um, uh, even, even pr programs like C++ have a schema that's uh, very analogous, uh, the difference being that Scratch is uh, graphical and doesn't require to memorize a lot of keywords. Instead, you select uh, blocks from menus. Uh, almost all programming languages have a way of implementing a loop, um, and it's common to think of uh, a program is similar to a recipe. Most recipes don't have loops, but some do. Uh, a recipe that says stir until all the ingredients are spread evenly and no lumps remain uh, is telling you to, uh, to loop until a certain condition occurs and then you, you leave that loop. And that's fairly closely analogous to a programming loop, uh, which will typically loop until uh, something happens or a number gets to a certain value. Um, Programs also have conditional execution, uh, and in this language that uh, matches most professional languages, uh, there, you can say if this, then that, or if this, then that, else, uh, this other thing. The else is sort of like an otherwise. Um, most recipes don't have this and else, but uh, you might have a recipe that uh, anticipates that 
not everybody has baking powder um, in their cabinet, uh, or they might have baking powder, but uh, they're down to the last quarter teaspoon and the recipe needs more than that. Um, so the recipe might say, well, if you're short on baking powder, uh, uh, use uh, baking soda with some cream of tartar, and that'll give you a, a version of baking powder. And to say that more formally, if you have baking powder, use one teaspoon, else uh, mix one half teaspoon baking soda with one half teaspoon baking tar uh, uh, cream of tartar, which is a different powder. So I'm going too fast as I usually do. Uh, questions on this slide or any of the previous slides? Uh, got my chat open so you can type the question or you can just turn on your microphone and shout out. Um, so we said that EB3 Classroom and Spike Prime uh, are both based on Scratch, and in many cases they're identical, but they do have to be somewhat different uh, to account for the differences in the kits. Uh, the motors and sensors for the EB3 uh, set are different in detail from the Spike Prime motors and sensors, so the blocks in the uh, language are different to account for those differences. Um, when you want to display something on the big brick, sometimes referred to as the hub, the display is different. So the blocks in the, the language for display account for those differences. Likewise, if you want to make uh, a sound, uh, the way that sound is generated in the different kits is different. So the blocks for that are different. Uh, for a lot of other things, the blocks will be identical. So as we go through the details, which we'll be starting in a moment, um, I will often talk about the Spike Prime uh, blocks first and then uh, show you the variation on uh, the EV3 version. If I don't uh, indicate there's a difference, it's probably because there isn't a difference or the difference is rather trivial. For instance, we'll see examples where clockwise and Spike Prime is shown as a uh, a curved arrow uh, that it, its arrowhead is pointing clockwise and counterclockwise is the opposite uh, graphic or icon. Well, for some reason in the AV3 language, they use the English words clockwise and counterclockwise, which makes it a little bit more language dependent. But uh, when you configure either one of these, you get to choose what language and we'll uh, be using English today, but there are many other languages supported by Lego. To bring up the uh, Scratch programming environment uh, on Spike Prime, you start the Spike Prime software and uh, you find the screen that gives you the choice of home and new project. You click on new project. It asks you whether you want word blocks, which is again, what it calls Scratch, or whether you want Python. In this case, uh, you want Scratch or AKA uh, word blocks, you click on that and you click on create and it uh, uh, creates a new project for you. If you're using uh, the EV3 language, the Python is not built into that. Uh, it's uh, separate, so it doesn't ask you which you want. Um, you uh, start the software, you click on new project and it opens a project window for you. Uh, if you have existing projects in either language, you go to My Projects and select a previous project to make changes or to download what you've already done. Um, each project is associated with uh, a program in the uh, traditional EV3 uh, G language. Uh, each project could have multiple programs, but in uh, the Scratch environment that we're talking about today, um, there's exactly one program per project, but as we'll see, there can be uh, multiple stacks of blocks uh, within a program, and we'll get into why that's true uh, a bit later. So uh, we're gonna be talking about motors and movement today. Uh, typically, you'll use a motor block if you want to control a single motor or 
Uh, you might have multiple single motors that you want to control them one at a time. Um, those motor blocks are usually uh, best used when you are dealing with attachments that might be things that the team members designed to lift, pull, deliver, carry, uh, or turn, uh, or push. Uh, any motorized mechanism that's not driving the robot around, uh, you'll probably use a motor block to control. If you want to drive around, you could use motor blocks, but it gets uh, complicated real quickly. Uh, so uh, the language includes uh, mo uh, movement blocks, which control two motors at a time, and those would be the, a pair of motors that have axles and wheels. Uh, those could involve gears, but typically they don't. They're usually directly, the wheels are usually directly driven by the motors. And uh, we'll see how you, can, how you do that. We'll actually cover the movement blocks first, because that's usually what uh, you do first. You, uh, the team members build a robot that has uh, at least two wheels, and those wheels are connected to the motors, and they want to be able to automate the uh, driving around um, the, and the navigation. And then um, as a secondary task, they add attachments that are motorized. In Spike Prime, there are six ports. Port is a fancy word for socket or connector. Uh, they look like an old fashioned uh, 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 telephone connector where you would plug a telephone to the wall, except they're a bit bigger because they're actually, from at least to my eye, mechanically the same as a uh, Ethernet connector uh, for cabling in Ethernet when you're not using Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, in Spike Prime, they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F. And any of those uh, six can be used for a motor or um, a sensor, uh, which means with an exception we'll talk about, or some exception we'll talk about, the total number of motors and sensors in Spike Prime at any one on any one robot would be six. The exceptions are that built into the Spike Prime uh, hub is a gyro, so that's a sensor that doesn't require a cable and therefore doesn't require a socket or connector. And the buttons on the Spike Prime hub are also can also be used as sensors, and those of course don't require cables either. Um, usually it's best for the team to decide which pair of uh, ports they want to use for uh, driving the uh, movement of the wheels and stick to those uh, so that when they switch programs, they don't have to move their cables. Uh, they can cons uh, All their programs can uh, assume the same pair of ports uh, for the wheels. So this slide uh, talks about the same thing, except there are some differences. Uh, when the EV3 brick was uh, designed, they put the motor uh, ports or uh, sockets on one side of the brick and labeled them A, B, C, and D. And uh, the connectors for the uh, sensors are labeled one, two, three, and four. And you cannot plug a motor into a sensor connector or vice versa. Uh, you must keep the motors connected on one side and the sensors on the other side. Um, but that does give you a total of eight but uh, the gyro is external to the hub for the EV3, so that counts towards uh, the four sensors, while the gyro does not count against connectors for Spike Prime because it's built in. Same hint as before, uh, choose a pair of uh, motor ports for the, the drive wheels so that the program can consistently refer to those ports. So how do you do that? Uh, on the Spike Prime, uh, there's a special uh, purple or violet, uh, lavender, whatever you call this color, uh, brick called Set Movement Motors, and you declare where you connected your movement motors. Uh, it would be common to use C and D, which are uh, on the uh, left and right or port and starboard side of the brick uh, in the middle, but you could just as easily pick A and B or E and F. Um, when you uh, first look at the hub for Spike Prime, it's very hard to figure out what the labels are because uh, they're indented white on white uh, on the brick. But a trick that I learned accidentally or from uh, uh, somebody in one of the classes, I forget which, 
is uh, something the kids probably would figure out, but uh, here's a hint. If you take an old fashioned pencil and rub the pencil against the indented letters, they suddenly become gray on white instead of white on white. You still probably can't see them very well on uh, this webcam, but uh, your eye can see gray on white a lot easier than white on white. Then on the uh, EV3, uh, the brick is a bit different. Um, and you have a choice of four, A, B, C, and D, uh, and you you select one uh, in this bubble and the other in the other bubble, and when you click on the bubble, it gives you those four choices, and you, of course, want to choose uh, two different ones. I think it won't allow you to select, uh, set both of them to the same. And again, so in either case, you're selecting a pair, uh, but uh, in the case of Spike Prime, it's A through F, and uh, in the case of EV3, it's uh, A through D are the choices. Any questions about that? So doing that doesn't actually cause a robot to immediately go off and do something. Um, it simply declares your intention so that when you ask, uh, when you use a uh, movement block later, you don't have to keep repeating yourself and saying C and D or B and C or whatever. You, you say it once. If there's some reason you change it, you could ch uh, use uh, one of these blocks to change it, but that would be re very rare. That typically you would have one of these blocks once at the beginning of the program, and um, then you wouldn't have to uh, declare your intentions again. So here's a, an actual movement block um, in this stack of blick. Uh, first, we've set the movement motors to B and C, which is what we covered on the previous slide. And then uh, the new thing on this slide is we ask it to uh, the, to uh, move uh, clockwise uh, for a certain number uh, of centimeters. When the case of the movement block, this clockwise doesn't actually mean clockwise literally, it means forward. Um, when you're using the actual motor bricks, it's literally clockwise or counterclockwise. Why the distinction? Well, if you think about motors, uh, if you're looking at an axle from the right side um, of the robot, forward would, would be clockwise. But if you're looking at the motor on the left side, to cause that wheel to rotate to drive the uh, robot forward would actually be counterclockwise. So. Uh, uh, you, the kids don't have to keep track of that mental, mental gymnastics. If they use the uh, uh, one that is clockwise, that should be forward in all cases, and then they uh, uh, need to say for how long. And they can specify it in centimeters, inches, rotations uh, of the axle, uh, degrees. Uh, so one rotation of the axle would be 360. If you wanted a half a rotation, you would have two ways of doing that. You could say 0.5 rotation, or you could say 180 degrees. Similarly, if you wanted a quarter of a rotation, you could say 0.25 rotations or 90 degrees, two ways of accomplishing the same thing. Uh, you can also tell it to uh, run for a certain number of seconds. Um, that would be rare because uh, you're going to want to navigate fairly precisely and uh, the uh, charge of the batteries, the friction of uh, the mechanisms would cause it to go a different distance if you always specify it in seconds. You're going to get a more reliable resort by specifying rotations or degrees. And I'm going to come back to this in a second because I want to show you that you have only three of these choices when it comes to EV3. Uh, you have rotations, degrees, and seconds. Uh, what happened to centimeters and inches? Well, in EV3, the kids need to do some math. They need to uh, figure out what the circumference of their wheels are and uh, use that to determine what one rotation will, will be. If the circumference of the wheel is uh, 25 centimeters, then one rotation may take the robot forward 25 centimeters. Um, if uh, it's a smaller wheel and it's only uh, uh, 10 centimeters in circumference, um, then the uh, uh, one rotation will take it a shorter distance. The, um, 
if they know the diameter and not the circumference, uh, you may either need to teach them the rule about uh, circumference equals uh, the diameter times pi or approximately 3.1, um, or maybe they already know that from school. Um, but that calculation could be done uh, with paper and pencil or uh, another way of getting the circumference of the wheel uh, would be to use a cloth uh, tape measure to measure the outside diameter of the wheel. So uh, that would be done uh, by the kids. Uh, it could also be done using blocks to calculate it, but uh, um, that wouldn't be required. But uh, if we go back one step, somehow the uh, spike prime gives you the option of specifying in centimeters and inches. And how could it possibly do that, given that you could have various size wheels? Well, it can only do that if you tell it the size of your wheels, which is a separate block that is only available um, in Spike Prime. And that's on slide 18. So I've gone forward a slide. Um, to set the distance per wheel rotation, um, you, can, you use this block probably once uh, in each program. And you can say that you've chosen a wheel that's 17 and a half centimeters in diameter, or uh, if you know if the kids know what the circumference of the wheel is in inches, they can uh, choose inches in this drop down and specify the uh, circumference in inches. Once they've told the program that, it then does the math for them, figures out how many rotations are required whenever they ask for a distance in centimeters or inches. Uh, so that makes it a little easier um, because uh, this particular piece of math is, is handled for them. Uh, and is one small example of how um, Spike Prime, especially, uh, and, and the Scratch version of Spike Prime, uh, make it accessible so that uh, there's one less thing for the kids to learn if they're uh, fourth graders trying to learn how to navigate a robot. So that extra elegance and that distinction uh, could easily be confusing. So let me take a breath and take any questions you might have about um, the various ways of moving the robot forward or backwards. No questions so far? Oh, don't hesitate if you, if you think of one. Another thing you can declare perhaps once in a program or uh, you can change uh, at, according to the needs of the, of the program uh, as to what uh, speed the motor should be running. You would think that in order to get as the maximum done on the playing field in two and a half minutes, the kids would always wanna run at 100%. But when they start learning to use sensors to navigate, a robot that's running at 100% that you wanted to make uh, stop on a black line or turn on a blue line, it may overrun that line if it's running at 100%. Um, not that the sensor didn't detect the blue or the black because the sensor is pretty fast, it's electronic, but the, the mechanical momentum of the robot running at 100% may cause it to be across the line and uh, back to white or some other color by the, uh, the time that the, uh, the the program is trying to change the direction or the speed. So uh, often that you'll get a more controllable robot by setting a slower speed um, using this block. And uh, it could be 5%, 25%, you name it all the way up to 100% speed. Um, and if uh, during one part of a, a mission, uh, they want it to run at 75% and they want it to slow down as they get close to something, they can do that by just using another copy of this block in their program. Any questions about that? So another block is telling the robot uh, to start movement or to stop movement. So the start movement block is shown here. You can see again, I. Uh, start with setting the movement motors because you need to always do that at least once in each program. Um, and then you say start moving. And if you wanted to start moving straight, uh, that will probably be 
or what the block says when you drag it out onto the screen. But if it's not, you can change it by clicking on it, and either filling in a number uh, where a positive number uh, greater than zero would be uh, uh, a, a right turn, uh, 100% or 100 would be a turn in place uh, where it would apply power uh, to accomplish a, a turn in place to the right, it would actually apply forward power to the left motor and reverse power to the right motor that it caused the robot to turn in place. And minus 100 would cause it to turn in place counterclockwise. And it'll keep doing that, whatever you told it to do, uh, at whatever speed the uh, motor's running, um, until you tell it to stop. So you, uh, the ro if you use this particular start brick, uh, Somewhere in that same program needs to be a stop based on an amount of time or a number of sec uh, or a, a, a sensor reading. Otherwise, uh, the robot will just keep running until it crashes into something. More typically, you'll uh, you you'll uh, use a more sophisticated block that will contain um, the uh, the length of time or the number of rotations. But uh, for maximum flexibility, you have this. Uh, movement block that starts the motors and runs uh, until you tell it to stop. Questions about that? Well, this is the Spike Prime uh, version, as uh, we note here on the slide, Spike Prime, but if I click again, it, it just changes this slide to the EV3 version. Um, and the main difference is that uh, the Oops, let's see if you can actually take, there's hardly any difference. So the straightness is um, is a bigger uh, drop down. Um, and we're actually using a different sample brick uh, block here where we're giving the rotations and the speed in the same brick. So that's not exactly apples to apples. Uh, I'll correct that in the future. This should probably just start the motor uh, because if you do it this way and specify a number of rotations, um, it will do that number of rotations stop on its own and you don't need the stop block. So that's an error in this slide, my apologies. So let me uh, show you another example and then I'm gonna demonstrate it right in the software. Um, here's a, a pair of stacks of blocks uh, that come from a lesson that's built into the Sprite Prime software called Training Camp One. Um, when you start the program using the uh, circular um, center button on the Spike Prime hub, uh, three blocks are, are executed because that's what we say here. When program starts, set the movement motors to C and D. Hopefully that's where we've cabled those motors. Set the uh, movement speed to 50% and declare that the wheels that we're using are 17 and a half centimeters in circumference so that one rotation will drive the motor, uh, drive the robot forward 17 and a half. The robot will then uh, not do anything more until uh, another button is pressed. In this case, when the left button is pressed, um, it will wait for one second um, and then it will move forward for 20 centimeters. It'll calculate uh, how many rotations it needs by dividing uh, 20 by 17 and a half. So it'll be one and a fraction rotations forward, and then it'll reverse both motors to go 20 centimeters back. Uh, so let me leave this slide set and bring up the Spike Prime software and Here is that stack of bricks that I showed at the top of that slide. And here's a different stack of bricks that is also on that slide, the 20 centimeters. Here's some other bricks that we're gonna get into um, tomorrow. Uh, so I, I've kind of done a detach here so they're, they're not active. Uh, so this is the first stack and here's the second stack. And I've already downloaded this into position zero on the brick. But if I wanted to re-download, I would click here and I would hit this down arrow and it would put it in uh, memory slot zero 
on the robot. Looks like the robot might have gone asleep. Here's the robot. And here's memory slot zero. And I'm going to switch cameras. And I'm going to stop the screen share to make that bigger on your screen. You can see an EV3 robot is waiting to go, but it's not its turn yet. So I'm going to tell it to start, but it doesn't do anything until I push the left button, which is just to the left of the circle. Go slower 20 centimeters and back center 20 centimeters. And that's all there is to it this particular demo. But uh, let's let's make a change. First, let's see if I can make this a little bigger, make it a little easier for you to see. I need to re-screen share so you can see it. I can scroll up a little bit. Down here is the magnifying glass for zooming in. And I'm going to change it to go forward 30 centimeters and back 15. Now, if I hit the start button right now, uh, it would do the 20 forward and 20 back because I need to re-download this. So I go back here and I click on, I think it may have lost this. Bluetooth connection. Let me see if I can reestablish that. To re reconnect with Bluetooth, I click here and I say connect with Bluetooth. And it goes and looks for something that uh, has Bluetooth on. I've got two of these, so I say I want to go this one. It reconnects to Bluetooth. And now I can go and re download. Okay, you probably can't hear it, but it made a little clicking sound indicating that it received that updated program. And if I drop the screen share to make it bigger and stop the program and restart it and then hit the left button again. Oops. Goes 30 forward and 15 back, so it doesn't come all the way back. If I do that again, it goes farther and comes halfway back. So cause and effect. So what else could I do? Um, if I click right here, oh, I need to re-screen share, sorry. It gives me some choices. So if I say I want it to go right, um, and then back, and then give it smaller amount, let's say 10 centimeters. And then I re-download that. Drop the screen share so you get a bigger robot. So it did a uh, turn in place to the right um, and then back up. So you can see there's many other variations uh, just using these these bricks and saying what I want left and right and uh, how, how many centimeters I can program the robot uh, to autonomously move around the field.
Any questions about that? So back to the screen share. So I could I could change this one as well to counterclockwise. Um, so I might as well do that just to show one more variation of the combination. Redownload. And drop the screen share. All right, that should confuse myself. Ah, something went wrong. Let me start the robot. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it turns to the right and then turn to the left. Uh, and it didn't turn the same amount because in my program, I specified the right turn would be 10 centimeters and the left turn would be 15 centimeters. So here's an example from EV3 Classroom. Um, and here we have the robot going forward for two rotations and then moving backwards for 720 degrees, which is two rotations, if you think about it, twice uh, 360, and then moving forward for one second. Um, so I think I've already put that in the robot. So let me switch to Three. I'm going to keep talking for a minute because the uh, EV3 powered down since I had it on earlier and um, it takes quite a while to get an EV3 to boot, like well over a minute. Um, so let's go to the EV3 software while we're waiting. So here's that same example, except I've previously changed it to uh, one rotation forward, half a rotation or 180 degrees backwards and one half se uh, second forward. The main reason I did that is uh, that the original instructions took it outside the, my little sample circle and outside the, the camera view. So I made some adjustments for demonstration purposes. Um, and here's another example of things we could do, uh, various number of degrees. The difference uh, is not only in the details of what we asked the robot to do, but this one is all conditioned on pushing the left button, while this is conditioned on pushing the right button on the top of the EV3 brick in this case. So this, it's, it's booted while we were talking. You drop the screen share, select that program. This particular brick has lots of programs. It's going to take me a minute to find it. There we go. So I start the program and nothing happens because we didn't tell it to do anything on start. So now I hit left, go forward, back half as much and then forward by seconds. Um, so the the other stack, if I go back here, tells it to turn right for 365 degrees 
and that uh, at 100 power, no, at 100 percent, which is uh, turn in place, and then turn right uh, for uh, 1380 degrees. And this is not how much the robot turns, but how many turns of the axle it, it executes. So that's an important distinction. So uh, 685 is is two uh, axle rotations, uh, not going making the robot spin in place twice. Um, and the, the final one says turn right at speed 25 percent for two axle rotations. So let's have it do that. You can see that uh, the first turn, um, and I can make that bigger for you. The first turn was a very tight turn because the program said a 100% turn in place, and then each successive turn was a softer turn. So, Good deal of flexibility in the in the turning, partly because both of the uh, robots I'm demonstrating today have two drive wheels, and the uh, in the place of two more wheels, there's a caster, so it makes it easy for the robot to turn in place. Questions about that? So let's go back to the slides. So there are a lot more uh, movement blocks. Um, in the case of Spike Prime, uh, in order to keep things simple for the kids, uh, the eight blocks you see on the screen are hidden initially when you first bring up the, uh, the software. And to get Spike Prime to give you these additional eight blocks, you go to the very low le lower left of uh, the project screen and click on this icon that looks like a couple of blocks with a plus, and then it gives you some choices and you, you say you want more movement blocks and it adds those to your menu. menu. Um, so we might as well demonstrate that uh, quickly so you can see what I'm, I'm talking about. I'll leave, I leave the uh, PowerPoint and go to Spike Prime. Um, right now, the movement blocks in this menu are these uh, six blocks, which you can do a lot with, but if you want more, um, you scroll all the way down to the bottom. Oh, they're not even available in the lesson. So to get more, I'm gonna have to create um, a new project by hitting on plus. Hopefully this will get past that problem. Saying I want a word box project create. Yeah. So I've left the lesson, uh, which was restricted to what we needed for the lesson. And now I have this little tiny icon in the lower left uh, with the plus on it. I click that and it says, oh, what do you want? And I say, I want more movement blocks. I click on the purple there and then hit the X. And now if I go to uh, the very bottom here, I see I've got more mood blocks, a whole bunch more. So that's a tip. If if once the kids start getting used to the movement blocks, they can pick up a bunch more by uh, selecting that icon. In the EV3 version uh, called EV3 Classroom, uh, you get all of the movement blocks uh, from the beginning, and you don't have to request them. Um, the uh, details of the move blocks are slightly different between the two. Uh, you can see, they, uh, generally they gave you the same power, but they, uh, the details are slightly different. So what haven't we talked about? We haven't gone into the details of the motor blocks where you want uh, a motor to control uh, a push, a pull, uh, a, a lift, 
a, a grab uh, various mechanisms that kids can design. Uh, some of those will be driven by gears and uh, pulleys and belts are even possible. Um, and so you need to declare uh, w before you use a blue movement block, which motor you're uh, planning on using. Um, excuse me, you, you, you typically do that with each block rather than declaring it in advance. That makes it different from the movement. With motor blocks, each block, you, you declare which motor uh, is going to be used. Typically, there would be a single motor, A through F, but you can see that you actually have a choice of saying you want to turn on multiple motors at the uh, option at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and you can even uh, declare that you want to turn on all, all of them. In the uh, EV3 version, uh, you, uh, you're restricted to A through D um, with each block. Then uh, you, you declare for uh, spike prime uh, to, to cause a particular motor, uh, any of, of the six ports, wherever you've got it connected. You can say you want that motor to turn clockwise or counterclockwise using this icon for rotations, degrees, or seconds. Uh, there's no option now for centimeters or inches because you're controlling the motor much more directly. You're not causing the robot to move. Typically, the motor's controlling something besides the movement of the robot. And the, the brick, uh, the block for the EV3 is nearly identical uh, with the same options, but they spell out the word clockwise or counterclockwise for some reason uh, in the EV3. But uh, the power of these blocks is, is effectively the same. Um, but the choice of ports is going to be different because on the uh, Spike Prime, you would have any of the six multipurpose ports, while on the um, EV3, you would have any of the four motor ports. Questions on that? So here's an example of a uh, program that uh, has a combination of movement and motors. Um, so uh, after uh, declaring the uh, what kind of movement it's going to make in terms of which uh, movement motors, the movement speed, the circumference of the wheels, instead of moving the robot immediately, um, it actuates uh, whatever's connected to port E at speed 20% cause it to, uh, that motor to run clockwise for one second uh, and then counterclockwise for one second and then do some beeping. We'll talk about sounds in a later uh, session. If you push the left button, uh, it waits for one second and then it causes the uh, robot to move. And this could be a more complicated motion. It could uh, move forward and back, right or left, just like we'd learned before. But the, uh, uh, you can see that one stack of blocks is actuated when the when program first starts. Another is based on the left button. There could be another stack of blocks based on the right button. Um, so even though there's a single program uh, that we're, we're selected, uh, there can be multiple options in that program based on which buttons are pressed on the top of the robot. Questions about that? Here's a block that's unique uh, to the Spike Prime. If I can show this by dropping the screen share, there's something very subtle that, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, you're probably not gonna be able to see this, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'm going to drop the screen share and hold this up here, and it's a little bit out of focus, but on the edge of that axle, you see a circle, uh, and the blue hub there is part of the axle, and if I rotate this manually, there are two are lined up, and so that's the start position. If, there, if it was over here, it would be 90 degrees off. And that's unique to the Spike Prime motors. 
Um, so what I, I can do then is I can say I wanted to go back to that position without telling it clockwise or counterclockwise, it'll figure out whether the shortest path to position zero is clockwise or counterclockwise. So I say I want the shortest path. If for some reason I wanted to go to that position only clockwise, I can select that from the drop down. If I wanted to go to position zero counterclockwise, I can do that. So three ways to get to position zero. But notice that the position here is in a white circle. And so let's go to the actual software now. Oh, I didn't do the screen share. So everything I just said you didn't see. My apologies. Let me do that again. You should be able to see it now. Shortest path is the first option here. Position zero is when those uh, the two dots on that motor are aligned. So if it's anywhere uh, that motor is anywhere, and I wanted to go to position zero because maybe that may makes um, something straight up. Maybe position zero is up, straight up, um, or or neutral. Uh, I can tell it to go to that position by the shortest path by selecting that. I can also change this. So let's go to the software. If I go. I need to find that particular brick. Uh, which one is the position brick? No, it's not a purple one. It's a blue one. I was looking at the movement blocks so that you need to or either look at the label here that says motors or remember the blue is for motors. And here's the brick I, I've been talking about. I can make this bigger. Oops, sorry. So I can select a port A through F where I've got this motor connected. I can uh, select shortest path or go to that position uh, clockwise or go to that position counterclockwise. Or I can uh, even say, no, I don't want it to go to the zero position. I want it to go to the opposite 180 degrees from uh, the two dots lining up. Or I want it to go to position 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees, which in this case would be 270. So that gives me a good deal of control for a mechanism that might be a lifting or a pushing or pulling mechanism to select what position I want um, the mechanism to go to by selecting it with this particular brick. And that's specific to the spike prime. I see it's uh, five o'clock. So we won't quite finish all the, uh, the movement slides, but uh, let's see what we're missing and then we'll, we'll uh, pick up on slide 30 next time. We'll talk about position and speed next time, uh, go a little bit more into the, uh, uh, some additional motor blocks, and we'll talk about the homework assignment. You've got a PDF, so feel free to look at uh, slides 32 and 33 of the PDF I emailed you uh, and uh, kind of go through the mental exercise of what you might do. Um, and then feel free to put me on the spot tomorrow. Uh, we can go through some of this together um, uh, in either Spike Prime or EV3 uh, software and talk about how you would accomplish these steps.